Our number five, branding. Branding is a superpower. Look at these images, Louis Vuitton, Apple, and Coca-Cola. These are powerful brands. When you see a Coca-Cola bottle versus a Safeway bottle, which one would you pick up and why? And you see an Apple phone versus a Nokia phone versus a Samsung phone, which one would you pick up? What gift would your wife want? A Louis Vuitton purse or a regular branded purse? Of course, you know the answer. These companies have built brands which make them charge premium. They can charge you a lot of money. Look at this another example. The image on the left is the Kind Bars at Costco. You can buy them, uh, this packet on the left, for about $20. And you get 20 bars. And here you get 30 bars for the Costco brand. And each of them can cost you only like 50 cents or half the price. The price difference between these two is 2x. Look at that. You get more bars and you get it at a cheaper price. Here you get less bars. So these companies that have built the brand, the Kind Bar is a brand, they're able to charge you a lot more money. Similarly, Coke, Apple, all of these branded companies, they can charge you money. And that is power, brand power. So brand is consistently providing high quality goods and services over a long period of time. What is a brand? There are many words here that are very important to understand the power of a brand. Consistency, high quality, long period of time. These three are super important takeaways. So a brand is built when you consistently provide high quality goods and services over a long period of time. Branding causes higher mental recall and positive emotion. When a customer is trying to buy something, if they have seen that ad of that product, they'll have a recall. They'll know, hey, this ad is associated with this product and that ad made me feel this way. So they'll have a positive recall. So a positive emotion with a recall of a brand in your mental sphere causes you to pay more. There is higher willingness to pay because you know what that brand stands for, you know that it is high quality, you don't have to uh, have any uncertainty or peace of mind, lose any peace of mind. That's the margin. That's what brand power is. People are willing to pay more for branded goods because there's lots of peace of mind. They are certain, if I'm gonna buy that Apple phone, it's gonna work. That it's not gonna have viruses. Or it's not gonna have all of these 10 problems that other phones have right and so this lack of uncertainty in quality is what makes people pay for the brand and brand is established over long periods so the barrier to brand power for any you know competitor let's say someone wants to challenge apple it's going to take them a long time because apple has built this brand over 10 years 20 years so for any newcomer to compete with apple unless they have a product that is super, super good and of high quality, it's still gonna take them a long time before they can capture market that Apple already has captured. So the incumbent enjoys a strong barrier. The barrier is basically the moat. The moat here is the brand power moat. And the moat here specifically is the long history moat, which is not easy to break. Unless Apple screws up, it's going to be very hard for you to break into that moat as a new competitor to Apple. But there are many reasons when a brand erosion takes place. So your power of brand reduces. These are the six main reasons. Counterfeiting. If Apple does not prevent companies to clone Apple devices and sell it at a cheaper price, then Apple's in big trouble. Counterfeiting of uh, goods and services is something that the 
incumbent or the strong player has to keep in mind. They have to prevent it. They have to patent certain uh, products that they sell. They have to make sure that they use law at their side to protect what they have built. Nike goods, uh, Nike, uh, let's say shoes. If you find Nike shoes in the market, which are counterfeited of low quality, then someone might buy it at a lower price thinking that, hey, this is Nike, so it has to be good. But then their experience would be poor because it's a counterfeit product. And so now they have diminished the value of Nike because they use a counterfeit product. So counterfeiting is super bad for brands. To the extent that the brands, even if they had to dispose of their products um, because it's no longer in demand, it's better for them to dispose of uh, without really selling at a lower price because then they are not losing the brand value. Going down market, if Apple suddenly starts selling $50 phones, it's going to be very hard for those people who are paying $500 to get that exclusive feeling of having Apple brand phones. So going down market is a risky proposition. It comes at a level of brand erosion. Unless you create new markets, brands typically get eroded if you go extremely aggressively in down markets. Also, consumer behaviors change. If Coca-Cola doesn't understand um, that, hey, new set of generation of consumers are not drinking Coke as much, and if they don't innovate and enter into those new markets, guess what? They're going to have the brand, but no one's going to care. So the brand value is eroded. So if the preferences of the consumer change. Geographic boundaries. Certain brands work really well in certain companies. Not all brands are global. So it's very important to know which brand has which presence. And for you to assess whether your brand is very powerful in one country or in all countries. And it also has um, limitations of type of goods. Business purchases don't necessarily go with brands. Like if my company has to buy me a phone, they'll not care whether they give me an Apple phone or a Samsung phone. They'll give me both choices, but then I have to choose. They just want to give everyone every option. But as a consumer, it's much more important what choices they have. So consumer goods are much more impacted by brand than business uh, procurements and business goods. So those are the factors that lead to brand erosion. Very, very important. Last image that I want to leave you with. If you are trying to um, buy a cola can and you see this one on the left, which is Coca-Cola, and one on the right is a Safeway Cola. Which one uh, would you buy? And let's say the Safeway Cola is like 50% cheaper. You'd buy Coca-Cola, right? You're like, okay, I'm gonna pay 50% higher, but I know what I'm buying, right? Why do you do that? Because of higher positive mental recall. You have an emotion that, that triggers in your mind saying, hey, this is good, and this is not I don't know, this is risky, kind of, right? So that fear or that uh, uncertainty causes you to not buy the regular, you know, our local brand versus an established brand. So it's very critical to establish brand, to invest in brands, and to be aware of these factors that causes brand erosion. But once you have this brand power, which is built consistently by providing high quality goods and services over a long period of time, then you have power where you can all of a sudden, when customers are trying to buy your products, they'll have a positive mental recall, the positive emotion, which will make them pay higher for your goods and services. Super, super critical in learning that, hey, you can charge much more. We started with this example, right? We can charge much more and this directly translates into margins. Companies that can charge a premium, in this case 2x, sometimes 3x, 4x the price, all of a sudden the cost for raw, raw materials for both of these would hardly be any different. You know, it says, hey, no artificial flavors, high quality protein, look at that, 5 gram protein here, 5 gram protein here, right? So there might be some differences, but the raw material cost isn't that different. 
So this difference in cost, the margin difference here is huge and it goes straight to the bottom line. So it's very important. If you want to have profitable, profitable business that is powerful, you want to build brand. But brand comes at a later stage, which we'll find out in the next set of videos. All right? Thank you.